They're going to red flag the event. They're going to stop the field, restart the race, and try and settle it. Well, Earnhardt has some kind of a transmission in that car that he can get good starts. We've seen him so many times when he leads races off to a good start. Look at Richard Petty coming up on the inside. Come on, King. What are you doing down there? He's showing muscle early in the race. On the first lap, he goes three wide into turn number three with Greg Sachs in the middle and Derek Cope on the outside. And here we go into the fourth corner now. Boy, somebody's got to give there. <laughs> three abreast racing. Look at this. Coming out of corner number four, they touch. All three cars are touching as they come down through the trioval, but everybody maintains position. Wow. Oh, no. Sachs is in trouble. And takes Penny with him. And we're going to have a terrific crash here as nearly all the field is going to be involved in this crash. There are only about 10 or 12 cars that survive this melee just past the starting line. When you have cars that near to the front get in trouble on the front straightaway, they take up the racetrack and practically everybody got involved. Well, as they come off of turn four, they are three abreast. Greg Sachs in the middle, he touches the outside car, then down on it on Petty, and they come into the tri-oval here, and they get together once again, and around they go, and then everybody starts getting involved. See, the track is just closed up. There's nowhere for people to go. Looks like the Derek Cope and Greg Sachs made contact just prior to Greg losing control. Very reminiscent of a crash in the 125 event here a year ago at Daytona. And it looks like we're going to red flag the race. Here they come again. The red flag has been displayed on the racetrack. The cars are being told to stop near the exit of Pitt Road. And as they go by, Darrell Walters' car, driven by Jimmy Horton, has some damage to the right side, so he did not get through the accident unscathed. Mark Martin's car is also damaged. He, of course, was one of those who started in the back as a result of yesterday's crash, and there is Daryl Waltrip's car being driven by Jimmy Horton. As you can see, the damage on the right side of it. Cars, several cars, able to make it around now to the pit area. But on the other hand, there are numerous cars down toward turn number one that may not be able to restart this Pepsi 400. We are under red flag conditions here on the first lap because of an accident that took out, uh, well, probably around 15 to 20 cars involved in the accident just past the starting line. Well, the tire marks tell the tale. That is just past the starting line down toward turn number one and an accident involving about 20 cars, about half the field involved in an accident just as they were completing lap number one. It began up toward the front of the pack when Richard Petty and Greg Sachs and Derek Cope came through here three wide at the start finish line and then Sachs loses it. He loses it, go down, goes down, hits Richard Petty. Richard loses control and first of the racetrack gets blocked and these fellows have nowhere to go. Buddy Baker sliding into a couple of cars there, Davey Allison and uh, Jeff Bodine. Looks, Bodine. Looks like Morgan Shepard with some damage. Here's a shot from the in car. from Buddy Baker's car. That hurts here. I was a victim, and it's a shame. There's 20 cars sitting out here on the racetrack right now. That means there's 20 in here being worked on. We're going to go work on our Budweiser Ford, try to get it back out there, get some more points. Uh, you know, what can you say? It's racing, but you hate to see it this way. First lap of a 
400 mile race. Come on, we got to go farther than this. Chris, we got a big spin. Chris had a spin down the main straightaway. Boy, we've got action here. Spin the main straightaway. Wilson. What kind of shape is your car? I'm going to wait to get his helmet off here. You can see the man taking off. We've got a spin up in turn three as well. A second car has gone down. Wilson spun through the grass and was able to continue. But the number 21 car of Dale Jarrett is down on the bottom of turn number three, and it will bring out still another caution. This happening as they complete lap 275. It is the eighth caution of the day as Dale Jarrett, who gave a remarkable performance in the Grand National race yesterday, has his problems with the Wood Brothers car this afternoon. Robbie Moroso just went by with the fender knocked off, so I think that probably had something to do with it. Yeah, there's Robbie. There's Moroso's number 20 grinding it down in the wall and a hard Ooh. sock for number 21. Man, that was a lick. They got together coming off two after they got straightened off two. And once they got hit, it, that way there was no stopping. You can see Robbie's car almost go airborne. We need to look at that number again, thank you. That car number 20 up on the outside using up the concrete. And then to the inside, you saw the old-fashioned steel wall, and we might reflect on those barriers for just a moment. They're coming off the second turn that we've talked about all day. They're pretty well on the straightaway. Looks like Moroso and Dale Jarrett got together about a quarter of the way down the back straightaway, and you sent Dale flying to the inside. That's quite a shot on the inside. And also, if you look close, you see a yellow car. The four car may have been the one that touched Moroso first. You can see, uh, I think it... See the skid marks right up to the old-fashioned walls. That used to be the uh, high state of fashion. That's the one that Neil Bonnet remembers well, that kind of thing. That kind of thing he just planted a car through, impaled it and that stuff. And just like this wall here we're looking at, took a lot worse shot right there. The car hit there, the, the wall is virtually undamaged. It really destroys the race car. In turn, after it hit this wall, went across to the inside of the race Second track. car, the 21 car. The, uh, went across to the inside of the racetrack. Here's the problem you get into. When you see this wall here, that ribbon of asphalt, I mean, excuse me, ribbon of rail that's laying on the ground, there's the possibility of that getting inside of the race car. When you hit the concrete, you might fly some dust around, but if that ribbon got inside of the race car, it could do severe damage to the driver. I had, I've had it laying right in my face before. And, and people always say, gee, concrete, that sounds so brutal, so, so very hard. Not the case. No, it, I mean, it, I, I don't doubt that the injury might be worse initially on the concrete wall. But you've also got to retain these cars inside of these racetracks. We can't work with letting them get outside in these grandstands. And that's one of the big concerns. And we have a red flag condition because there are at least four guardrails that are torn up in the back straightaway here. And, and that's another reason why these things aren't very effective. That's exactly the reason one of the main changes went to shutting these races down to do work that doesn't need to be done. There's the race summary as they show 281 laps complete, and we are under red with the all cars brought to a halt down in the turn one and two area. The average speed staying at 92 miles an hour, which is under the race record of 95.7, and it takes a real shot here of these last laps under caution. Now the red period coming up would not be a counting period until they go back to turning wheels. Davey Allison set the record on this track, and here's the work continuing on the barrier on the inside of turn two. And here's what made the little dent in the barrier. It was a big old race car heading in that direction. Coming in there, totally out of Dale's hands after that. When you get bumped outside, you're going in there. The car hit. That section there was when it knocked that rail out, luckily backed into it with the car. So, the field is at rest for the moment here at Richmond. In our live coverage on PBS today of the Richmond 400, 281 laps down with Wallace.